All right. So uh, before we do get dive into this uh, for this week, uh, let, let's talk about the uh, the golf course. So we have to keep this in mind. I mean, this is the strange one because this is like an easy golf course. And to have like an easy golf course, TPC River Highlands, as a signature event, it's very strange. But hey, they got Travelers. Travelers has a lot of money. So they're, they're, they're putting the money up and good for them. But it's just an easy golf course. You know, I'd have to think if I'm the, look, if I'm the PGA Tour in a way, wouldn't you? Now, I don't know what their connection is with TPC River Highlands. I mean, I don't recall this being some sort of great, you know, legacy golf course in any way, shape, or mm-hmm. form. So I'd be like, look, if you're going to keep, you know, putting money up for a signature event, maybe we find a different venue. I think, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's not, it's not the most exciting course. Um, I think part of the reason I, I believe this is the second most attended regular PGA tournament behind only waste management. I think they get they get awesome crowds here, so I'm sure that's part of it. Like they're they're, they're not leaving this course, and you know might as well have it be elevated. And I'm sure this is one that's going to rotate, right? Like it's not and probably won't be elevated next year. I would assume. Well, that's, um, uh, well, but, yeah, but that's only yeah, but one, I right? I think it. it's only one of them that gets off the board uh, each year. Is it? Is it just one? Yeah, I, I think it was so. Maybe one or two, but. Yeah, but anyways, I think part of it is the attendance. Um, yeah, just go, going back to the course quick, this is the second shortest course they play all year. It's a par 70. It's less than 6,900 yards. So um, yeah, that that's a big thing here is that the the, the shorter accuracy-type accuracy, accuracy type players have a better chance here than they do at a lot of these other signature events that are played at you know these long, tough golf courses. Yeah, that's uh, definitely an advantage, no question about it, or at least uh... – it, it, it uh, eliminates uh, the disadvantage that uh, those short right. hitters normally have. So that's good. I always think that's good. Uh, the more, the merrier. It helps us out. Um, uh, taking a look at uh, just some of the winners since, uh, let's see, even if we just go back to 2017, um, I mean, you have, let's see, one major, two major, three major, four major, five major winners have won here since 2017. So, um, uh, and again, it's only been a signature event one year. That was, because uh, it was last year, right? Signature event last year? Yeah, it was, yep. Yeah, Keegan Bradley winning last year at 23. The score, that was, I think, a, vi- uh, a record. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, not the par, but the overall score of 257. It was 23 under par. I think the record, I believe, is 25 under par. So, um, yeah. So that's kind of what we could see once again. And that's, and I know it's not in your stats, but that is even the one thing that I was looking at was, uh, I was taking a look at some, some like matter of fact, I was taking a look at Oberg and a few other golfers. Uh, cause, uh, mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm thinking of maybe taking Oberg this week. And then I looked at it, but I want to see how he plays on, I want to see what his uh, record is this year on the easy golf courses. And I'm like, wait a second, not good. If you look mm-hmm. at it, He's had the three yeah. easiest golf courses he's played at are like his worst results. Uh, Century, uh, Sony, and Texas. Uh, that's the three of his worst results of the season. As soon as I saw that, I was like, nope. I'll, 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 I'll. Now, look, of course, it's, it's a big money event. That is, is something they have to take into account. But right. it, is, it is a little bit of a cautionary kind of deal there when you, when you notice that. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, I um, considered making that part of my model this week, how, you know, how guys do on quote unquote easy courses. I decided against it though, because like, despite what Keegan shot last year, the winning scores here are usually more like in the mid to high teens. So actually, if, if you go to Fantasy National, the site I use for stats, like they actually tell you what percentage of rounds at each well, course that's is true. classified in yeah. an easy, average, or difficult. 60% of the rounds at this course actually fall in their average scoring bucket. So, But but it's still to me, to me it, it's still like the last it's still four. The easy side. You know, it's 19 yeah. under, 19 under, 23 under. Harris English was 13 under in 2021. There was one year, mm-hmm. and maybe it was yeah. weather-related. But, 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 and it's true. I mean, I, I, I don't know about Sony. I know Century. Wait, wait. Yeah, I'm trying to remember now. Yeah, Who, Century, yeah, Century's the one that's 28 yeah. under par or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Sony is more like this, I believe. And Texas yeah. also, I believe, is a little bit like this. 
Um, but yeah, it's true. It's not Sentry, which is another silly thing. Uh, but they're never getting rid of that. So, um, but you would just wonder, man. And we talked about it. I mean, how could come on, toughen up the golf course a little bit, put more rough, you know, grow a little rough or something. I mean, come on, speed up the greens. There's some ways you can manip- manipulate uh, that golf course. Um, anyway, so let's take a look at your stats. Let's see what do we got here. Okay, so uh, we've got top ten in strokes gained, tee to green, par seventies under seventy two hundred since twenty twenty two, and top ten in par fours from four hundred to four fifty just this year alone. Yeah, we have the course history too, which really all three of these stats are kind of different ways to look at the same thing. You know, course history obviously is course history. Strokes gain T to green on the short par 70. So again, T to green is taking out putting. So we're not factoring how they're putting on these short courses because that you know shouldn't matter whether it's short or long, how you're putting. But you know, basically how you're how you're hitting off the tee and how you're hitting your irons on these short golf courses. And then this par four between 400 and 450 yard range, we have eight of the holes on this course fall in this range, which you know for for the PGA tour, these are shorter par four so you know who's who's doing best on these short par fours you see some some crossover between these lists which which makes sense you know i think the um it's funny that the top 10 in um par four is 400 to 450 that's like a who's who of like short hitters right like bez is a short hitter poston plays well in these short courses henley is a classic short hitter uh harman so i got kind of all the guys you'd expect pop up there littered with the elites you know scheffler xander those guys are going to show up on any top 10 list yeah, the, the uh, couple of them are on both lists, and it includes Benny on and Post on. And I think that's – oh, Henley. Henley, Poston, and on, right? Those are the only three on both. Uh, yes. Okay. Yep. So yep. keep that in mind, and that's good because I do have one of those. Uh, matter of fact, let's go ahead – where are we? Let's go ahead and uh, pop – uh, up our picks. So these are our total picks. Uh, there's, I've got five this week. Uh, Jared's got four. Uh, Jared's top pick being Cantlay, my top being Matsuyama. And you can see uh, how we uh, laid it out uh, with our 100 bucks we, we uh, invested in each week and how we uh, divvied it up uh, within our picks. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll get into actually yeah we'll, we'll get into our best of the rest and our one and dones and uh, when we're done here um, going over uh, our picks and anything else so let, let's uh, let me see let's go ahead and, uh, and get started first of all with this uh, top group here. well our, let's, I'll tell you what let's, let's go ahead and um, and and go right into uh, your top pick being Cantley because to me, and 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 Cantley is definitely is on my list. Is on my best of the rest, and I and I and I was probably going to take him as well. Um, and Annette, and, and, but I kind of felt that if you took him, and I know I, I I then then I was like where I'm at now, which is I'm. It's almost one of those situations where I feel like it's too easy of a pick <laughs> yeah. because of what he did. We know. I mean, he had never played that well before in a major. And by the way, I'm, I, I was saying to myself going into Sunday, I was like, if Cantley wins this, I know how he's going to win it. It's the U.S. Open. He's going to win it if DeChambeau or one somebody, you know, chokes and right. he goes in, puts in a score, and then somebody goes like triple bogeys the 18, like DeChambeau and can't. That's how Cantley would win his first major. But uh, he played pretty well. But as usual, he missed. Putts he could have made oh, uh, yeah. on Sunday. That's typical Cantlay, but it was a, you know a, a big effort for him at a major, which was my point. Right. A plus throw in the fact that he has a really good resume on this golf course results wise, including his best last year. And it's like, yeah, come on. I mean, it's it's a no brainer. It's a good number, but it kind of scares me, you know, because it's almost too yeah. easy in a way, too easy of a pick. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I, I think getting him at, you know, he, he was he was 25 to 1 this morning. Then he dropped to 22. I think he dropped to 20 after Rory, Rory withdrew. Um, even 20, though, I think it's, it's like it's like yeah. a fair fair number. Like, I don't think, you know, I don't think the, the number is saying it's like too easy a pick. So I'm, I'm yeah. happy to take it. Um, it's funny. Cantley's putter actually carried him for the first three days 
at the U.S. Open. Like, his ball striking was okay. It wasn't great. On Sunday, the ball striking was unbelievable, and he could not make a putt. So, you know, he, he kind of failed to put both of those together for any one round. But I thought it was a super encouraging performance now. And, and can't lie to I want to say, like, a lot of guys, a lot of high-end players coming off a major performance like that, I'd be worried about a letdown the following week. But, like, Cantley needs a freaking win. Yeah. Like, he needs to win. He's got momentum. He's coming to this course he loves. He's fourth in course history on our list there. He is um, 16th in T to green on short those short par 70s. He's the fifth best Pete Dye player in this course. We didn't mention that. This is a Pete Dye design track. Um, Cantley has done well on Dye courses throughout his career. Bent greens are his best putting surface. He's the oh, 15th just keep, keep them coming. Keep them coming. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a perfect spot. It, like yeah. you said, it's too easy. I totally agree with you. It makes too much sense, but... You know, I, hey, I, I'd, kill okay. myself if, I'd kill myself if, if Cantlay won and I didn't bet it because it was too Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. You have to take him. You have to. Yeah. You, yeah. It's just one of those things that, like, what you don't want to do is don't be betting the house out there. <laughs> because the two easy ones, those are the ones you'll get in trouble with betting the house. Just go ahead and bet them and you know, bet a few bucks on them. Absolutely. But just don't never get too bet crazy. The house. Never, never bet no, the house. You're right. Never bet the house. <laughs> Unless you have two. Um, and you don't have any kids or a wife. All right. All right. So, uh, let's see. Next up. Now I have, see my, it kind of worked out this way, but all of my guys are like all in the same kind of area. Matter of fact, when I made my picks about whatever, five hours ago, I had, I believe four out of the five. Yes. Masiyama was the only one. The other four were all 35 to one. So I was in that same group at 35 to 1, but now they've all kind of changed and moved up a little bit. But, it, I mean, right here, all three of them are right here. Matsuyama, Finau, and Burns. And for me, Matsuyama was also kind of a no-brainer, like Cantley in a way, because remember we talked about it last week. He, he's starting to play better again. And yeah. then here he goes, and he has another good week. So now he's trending really well, back-to-back -to -back top 10s. He's already got a win in the Signature Series. 13th last year in his first appearance, which is solid. And I just think this uh, makes a lot of sense for a guy like Matsuyama. Uh, yep. uh, even though he's won already, and I know Cantley needs it more and all that, and, and he's coming off a major. But I, I just think he's got the disposition to go out yep. there uh, and, and, and get it done. And as far as Finau, same thing. He is trending really as good as we've seen him trend maybe in the last couple of years. Uh, and we're not talking about winning Mexico or any of that crap. Uh, but competing like he did, this is the best we've seen him in a major in a while. Uh, so his trend line is awesome. He only has one top 15 here, but if you look at some of the trends, uh, there's a trend that says, um, and I think it might be eight or nine years or something like that, where uh, a lot of the guys who have won here never had like a top five before. So you don't have to have a really good history here uh, to win. So I think that's something just to keep in mind. And then Burns, who's on this page here, we both have talked a lot about Sam Burns, as you know, lately. And I just yeah. felt, well, you didn't take him, so I'm going to make sure that one of us does because he had one of his best major appearances, even though he was very quiet, nobody noticed him. But I'm not sure if Burns has ever had a top 10 before in a major. I don't I don't think he has. Um, yeah, I I had some money on him last week, so I was following him. He was never really in the mix, but no. he, he it's funny. He um I think he was plus four in his first five holes on Thursday. And after that he was like really good. So yeah, I I, I looked at all th three of these guys. It's funny. Hideki and Finau, I have the same concern. It's just can they make enough putts to win a tournament where you know you might have to get to, to twenty to one to win. But ball striking wise, especially Finau, I mean his ball striking's been awesome all, all year. He he hasn't been that bad as a putter lately, which is all he needs to do. But again, can he make enough to win here. Burns can definitely make enough putts to, to win here. I think it's a really good setup for Burns. You know, a lot, at least a few of the tournaments he's won have been on these courses that, you know, get, get up to, uh, you know, 16 to, to 20 under par. All right. Uh, and then uh, moving on down uh, the list here, there's another one of my picks and there's your pick there on the bottom. So I have Henley, you have Connors and I was considering Connors um, not sure if I would have taken him, and uh, he almost made my best of the rest. Uh, so I, I, I was giving Connors a look. Why not? He, he, he was able to squeeze in in the very last possible uh, hole or minute, 
or day to get into the Olympics and overtake Adam Hadwin. So he has to feel real good about that. But he's usually Mr. Top 20, but yet he's got two top 10s in his last three. So uh, I'm sure you're seeing exactly what I'm seeing, plus ninth last yep. year. That's also very important. And Henley, uh, who you have, by the way, on your fantasy team, uh, had a, a very impressive showing, uh, played really well on Sunday, uh, and he's not really a great major player. So he finished uh, seventh, and his last five have all been in the top 30. Three of those are top 15s. He's played well in a couple of the signature events, fourth at Bay Hill, 10th at Wells Fargo, and he's had a good resume here. Uh, you know, he's had one missed cut, but everything else has been uh, top 35, three top 20s, one, one, uh, two uh, top, actually a sixth place finish was his best result. And overall, he's got five top 10s and three top fives uh, in his last, um, uh, no, actually he has, I should say, overall, uh, he's got five top tens, three top fives, and the seventh last week as one of his top tens. So, but that's the kind of guy he is. He doesn't have a lot of top tens on the year normally. But I will say this about Russell Henley is that if you're going to take him, the best time of year to take him is this time of year. He seems to play better after the U.S. Open. Matter of fact, last year was one of his best runs in the summer uh, when he played really well in the playoffs. Um, so, uh, I felt, why not? Why not go with Henley? I, I don't like the number. I don't like him being around with all the top guy, top guns, yeah. but Hey, you never know. I mean, he's coming right after a major. Maybe he'll take advantage of it. Yeah. And again, like we said, with all those stats, like this course is tailor made for Russell Henley. If he's, if he's going to win, this is a good spot for it. Um, same kind of deal for Connors really. I mean, he's a shorter accuracy type player. We saw him, he was 10th on our, um, course history first in t to green on those short par 70s um cory connors i mean just look just look in 2024 this entire season second best player in this field in stroke scan approach it's scotty shuffler number one cory connors number two he's also 14th best off the tee the issue with connors is always the short game the around the green and the putting but you look at his last three tournaments now and by the way his last three tournaments he's come sixth at the rbc canadian 20th at memorial ninth at the U S open. So the results have been there. He's gained strokes around the green in all three of those. And he's gained strokes putting in two of the last three. So if he's like, I don't know if he's found something, it looks like he might've found something, or at least he's on a bit of a hot streak around the green and, and putting wise. So if he can keep that rolling again, the, the off the tee and the approach stuff is always, you know, top notch. The only thing that I would be concerned with, uh, and that's the reason why I w- I'm not sure if I would, I would have had him in the running, but uh, cause I almost did, but I didn't. The only thing I'm concerned with is, now that maybe what he found in the last three weeks was Olympic motivation. And now that he's in, how does he play? Is that motivation Mm -hmm. kind of done now? That's the only thing. But hopefully if he gets off to a good start, uh, that's probably what you're looking for is, is let's get off to a good start, get in this, you know, get in. Because that's also something we haven't seen a lot of Connors uh, really in his career. He he really doesn't put himself in position to win very often. You yeah, know? he's a, he's a top he's a top twenty guy. Yeah, he's like Siwoo part, Kim. But, you know, he's yeah. one of these guys. It's just yeah, top thirty, top twenties, but top of the leaderboard. You just don't see it very often. Uh, as we uh, swing on down here, so um, three more of our picks. Speaking of Siwoo, he's not one of our picks because he's awful on this golf course. Um, <laughs> but uh, Brian Harmon's on my list. Sepp Straka yeah. and Tom Kim are on your list. Uh, I was definitely looking at both of those. Why not? I've been picking them the last uh, couple of events, so I definitely was right there with both Straka and Kim too. But uh, Harmon is my pick, and I and I just looked at the fact that he's been really good here. Matter of fact, he's got five top tens the last six years on this golf course. Uh, keeping in mind, he hasn't had a top ten since the players, um, but it's a signature event. You know, it's it's far off far away away from the open championship defending it that I'm not worried about that. So mm-hmm. uh, I think this is the perfect time to take him. Uh, maybe even the, the, the best time to take him for the rest of the year, to tell you the truth with the money that's at stake. Um, and then you've got Straka and Kim. And again, Straka does have a 10th place finish on this golf course, even though he didn't play all that well last week, he does have four top tens in his last six with three top fives. And then the other guy, of course, being Tom Kim, who we have spoken a lot about on this show recently. Um, And once again, he put himself in position to have a good Sunday. And then he just, uh, just, I don't know, he lost lost something. So there still seems to be something that's just not 
entirely there with him. But if he can put it all together, especially on an easier golf course, then it's a pretty good bargain. Yeah, and of course that fits Tom Kim much better. I mean, you know, he, he's a shorter accuracy hitter. You look at the couple wins he has on the PGA Tour, they're on short courses. So the, the fact that he's been able to have the finishes he has really the last two weeks at the U.S. Open and, and at Memorial, you know, courses that don't really fit his game, they're, they're too long for him um, to, to, like, really compete, I think. But you even look at the numbers, like, it was, it was you know, we know it was bad for Tom Kim basically through, what, like, mid-July. And at the PGA Championship, he started to figure it out. He's he's now gained strokes off the tee in four of his last five. He's gained strokes on approach in four of his last five. Um, and again, I just I think this is a good course fit for him where we really haven't seen that in the past couple of weeks. So. He's made nine straight like, cuts now. So th- yeah. it seemed like you said it seemed like it was just yesterday that he was struggling yep. mightily. Right. Yeah. So I, I think he's got it figured out. I think you know we're still kind of getting a bit of a discount from what he would have been a year ago. He probably would have been thirty to one in this field a year ago. Um, and then yeah, S- Seb Straka is just a form play for me. I mean, this guy, even last week, the dis- the disappointing stuff last week for him was all around the green and putting. The off the tee and approach was still awesome. Just look at the last two months in this field. He's the 14th best player off the tee and the sixth best player on approach. And he is also generally a good putter. Like he's, I don't worry about him making enough putts to win this. Remember when he won, what did, what did he win last year when he almost shot the 59 on Sunday? Was that John Deere? I want to say whatever it was like he, this guy can definitely fill it up. He can go low. He can make birdies. I'm not worried about this, you know, score being too low for Seb Straka to win. So I just think he, he's a guy that's been trending towards a win. And I think that this is a decent spot for him to get it. All right. And then uh, scrolling on down. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have here? Um, is that it? Do we, do we go through our picks already? Let me Those see. are my four. Those are my four. Did we go through our picks already? Yeah, we did. That's right. I forgot. I put all my picks in the same area. I usually have like a, a long shot, but um, I'll tell you right now, the long shot that I almost had is right here. Denny McCarthy. He was the one that I was really Your boy. this close to putting yeah. on my list. I just, I just, I, he was, he was my next guy. So if I would have taken yeah. someone off, he would have made it. Um, and because, we've got to keep in mind that last year he started the, the, the event with a 60 in the first round. Um, finished seventh, um, yeah. and he, he right. does have a top ten. Uh, matter of fact, at the last thing that year, the Wells Fargo, um, and um, and he also was second at the Texas Open, which is an easier golf course. So and he's you know this is this is fits him. It's this shorter course, and uh, right. so I think there are a lot of things saying yeah maybe Denny McCarthy this week. Yeah, I, I looked at him because I kind of thought the same thing. And listen, it still could be. He's just such an absurd golfer when you look at his stats. Because like even like he has lost strokes on approach in six straight events, but he's also like gained a ton of strokes putting in all of those. So it's like he's like the opposite. I always say I want like I want these good approach players where if they can find the putter one week, they're going to win. McCarthy's like he's a great putter. If he can find the irons one week and just be decent on approach, he's going to win. So we'll, we'll see. All right, let's pop up actually the uh, best of the rest. Uh, our extra picks, um, and uh, I have Dietrich, Fleetwood, Lowry, and there's McCarthy and Cantley, who I spoke about, and then you have Batia, Harmon, uh, and Henley, so two of my picks, mm-hmm. and Hovland. So you've yeah. got uh, Batia, Hovland, who we haven't talked about, and I have uh, Dietrich, Fleetwood, and Lowry, who we have not yet talked about. So uh, yeah, uh, w- w- out of those, uh, out of that group, well, out of those two talk about right. uh, well of course you've talked a lot this year uh, about Batia. uh we, yeah. we know how much you like him um so uh, why do you like him on this on this golf course uh it, really a number thing for me last i checked he was 90 to 1 um, he's also one of the most accurate drivers on tour and that's important this weekend in a shorter course you want to keep it in the fairway club down all that stuff so i think it's a good yeah i mean i, I think 80 to 1 is still a pretty good number for actually i think he, he should be lower so i think that's a good bet Hovland, I mean, I considered making my card like Cantlay, Hovland, and maybe one other guy. I think that's viable this week. Um, you know, Victor's U.S. Open, I obviously didn't get a lot right at the U.S. Open, but I feel like I got Victor Hovland right because it was totally the short game. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he gained – he gained. I mean, not, not that the ball striking was awesome. I will say it was kind of subpar for him, but he, he gained a half stroke off the tee. 
He gained 2.1 strokes on approach. He even gained putting. He lost three and a half strokes in in two rounds around the green. Um, now again, that that was the that was the short grass chipping that he struggles at. But we're kind of back this week to the thick rough around the green that we saw at Memorial. That that stuff he's okay short game wise. So I, I think he'll bounce back this week. Would not be surprised at all if he ends up winning. So I think Hovland, I think he's still twenty to one, right? I think I think I think going Victor and Cantlay, just going those two um, big guns, is definitely a viable betting strategy this week. Yeah, well, and keep in mind, uh, just uh, Batia 50, 80 to one. He wins Texas. I I, mm-hmm. I mentioned McCarthy, uh, who was second at Texas. So. Yep. Um, and again, that that's a, it's a relatively easy golf course. Is why I bring that up because uh, we haven't really seen many easy golf courses uh, since Texas. Uh, I'm not even sure if we have seen one um, since Texas. So uh, yeah, yeah that, and Batia is trending in the right direction as well. Um, there's Dietry, and look for me, I'm at the point now where uh, because he played so well again at the U.S. Open and. Yeah. He, he's now played, he's 14th at the U.S. Open, 4th at PGA. He, he broke out, of course, at Pebble with that 4th. Um, he's trending, his trend line is, 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 is nice. He did miss the cut last year, but I'm not worried about that. Um, mm-hmm. Look, he's a hit and miss guy. I get that. That's just the way he is. He's never won yet. That's also, you know, to win a signature. But he, he's been competing yeah. in these big events. And, you know, seeing Pavone... Win an event, Pebble. No, who did he? What did he win? Uh, Tory Pines. Tory Pines, and then do, pretty much do nothing, and then yeah. be on the final pairing at the U.S. Open. I mean, yeah. if he can do that, then Dietrich can win, and uh, and then we'll look back at his resume and say it's better. So I think uh, I think anything's possible. So Matt Kattire get a win course i'm talking yeah. about these european tour players who've come over here and have shown that even though they don't have a bunch of wins on the european tour uh they can get it done here well Dietrich has zero wins on the dp world tour i they, they said that during the broadcast over the weekend i think it was saturday when he was still that's he was in the mix this past weekend and he disappeared i i couldn't believe when they said that, that this guy hasn't even won it on the dp world tour he has a challenge tour win and he has some australian tour win it looks like but so, I mean that that worries me. It's a hundred to one, so like you're not, you know, it doesn't kill you if the guy blows another one. But he's yeah. just his his play his play when he's in the mix, um, even just this year on the PGA Tour has been um, pretty pretty tough to watch. And then a couple others uh, again for me. Um, uh, I, I went ahead and put uh, Fleetwood in there. I think he is you know thirty five to one, and Lowry okay. too at seventy to one, uh, mm-hmm. and Fleetwood. Uh, even though he hasn't had done much here, one top 15, he's trending well coming in. And he's made 14 of his 15 cuts this year, including the Dubai win. Um, meanwhile, Lowry, you're getting double the money. Uh, let's see, where's Lowry? Where, where, I guess I must have missed him. Where is Lowry? There he is. He's now down to 60 to 1. I believe he was 70. He was 19th here last year. And he was 19th last week, which is pretty good. For Shane Lowry, but the thing I'm a little bit concerned with, with Lowry is, is he's usually better as we know on the tougher golf courses, not the easy exactly. ones. Exactly. So yeah, that'd be my concern with him. Can he make enough pots? Same kind of deal. Um, I got I got three um, super bomb long shots that I was looking at today. Okay. Uh, I didn't even put them on our on our list, but uh, Adam Svensson, my boy, who has started to play better lately and is a short course specialist. Um, Lee Hodges, who I know you bet, um, I think a couple weeks ago, he, you know, he's still been hitting, he, he had, he had a tough memorial, but you know, that's, that's memorial, not, you know, he, he's not at that level yet, I think, but on a, a course like this, I think suits his game a lot more. And then, um, Emiliano Grio has started to figure it out. He was, he'd been bad for a while. I think that's why last I looked, he was like 250 to one. But you, you look at the numbers, he, he started to figure it out. The off the tee the last two weeks has been like neutral, and then the iron game has actually been pretty good for about a month now. So, I mean, Griot's a guy that just won last year, and like when he, he's another guy, you want him on these short, uh, positional type golf courses. So, I think Griot is someone um, that the odds haven't caught up yet to the fact that he's starting to play a bit better. Yeah, his game definitely disappeared. We expected a lot more from him, um, and he got off to a good start, too. 
uh, earlier this year. Things were really looking good. Mm -hmm. And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden, um, right around, it looks like right around players, he just mm -hmm. lost his game and it really hasn't come back, I guess, until it's starting to show now. So Yeah, it is. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. And just uh, see if there's anyone else. Um, since it's a signature event, there really isn't anyone else that I, that I was looking at that I could say, hey, here's a long shot to consider. So let's take a look at yep. the um, one and dones uh, before we wrap up. And so there are your three, uh, Oberg, Cantlay, and Hovland, and mine, Cantlay, Finau, and Matsuyama. So uh, mm -hmm. now the thing with this is, once again, the Cantlay factor. So mm -hmm. in our yeah. league, I noticed that he's he's uh, only sixty five percent have 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 taken him already. So that's pretty have good. Taken him or he's sixty five percent available? No, sixty five percent have taken him. Really? Yeah, he's only got thirty five percent left. Huh? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I thought he was going to be the most popular pick this week, but that obviously makes it tougher for him to. Uh. Yeah. Where did everyone use him? Where did know, everyone right? use him? <laughs> well, th there have been a couple of golf courses that he's had really good histories at. So uh, sure. I yeah. know his game wasn't playing well, but I guess they just decided, well, the golf course is good, so we'll take him there. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm surprised right. too. Uh, but yeah, that's why this would probably be a good week because now in our league at For least, sure. because with only 35% right. left, uh, why not try to take advantage of that? So. Yeah, it's interesting. I, yeah, I'm, I mean, I still think he's going to be popular. You know, thirty-five percent of people have him left. You know, yeah, most of them, most might, of them will take him. This half week. of us might use him. Yeah, and I and I I've official I've like I've switched mindsets on one and done because I went I went Brooks last week and Bryson was pretty damn popular in our pool, so I've I've like fallen behind again. So I'm back to like trying to trying to make sure I'm different with my picks. Um, so does that mean you're looking more so towards kinda, Oberg or Hovland? I think I'm leaning towards Hovland. I don't think he's going to be that popular, right? Kind of coming off a disappointing U.S. Open. A very I, I agree. Fight, I think right? most people will take yeah. Oberg. Yep. Yeah. So I so I think I think Hovland's where I'm leaning right now, and ho hope hopefully he's you know less than ten percent owned. Yeah. If I was going to take someone and not and go with Cantlay just because of like you said, same thing. I mean, I'd have to get some really weird ones. I'd probably. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, Finau would probably be the way to go in that respect. Yeah, um, I think so. But, uh, you know, I, I, even though I feel more confident with Matsuyama than Finau, but yeah, uh, Finau probably isn't going to be on uh, a lot of people's, uh, you know, short list this week based on his resume on the golf course. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of other players that you can consider. As far as the other big names, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I'm just not feeling it with, with uh, I mean, Morikawa does not have a good resume on this golf course at all. Um, that's, Surprisingly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, be good here, but let's see. I mean, th uh, th right now, Thagala, Justin Thomas, Wyndham Clark, Max Homa. These uh, jo I forget Jordan Spieth. I mean, these guys oh, yeah. are just not on their game right now. Uh, too much, too much inconsistency at best. Yeah, yeah so, so I, so I the one that I think is close. Is like I don't think he's not he's not playing great right now, but he's also not playing poorly. I'm also like not not worried about him. And he, he has unfinished business here because he lost to Xander in 2022, I think it was. Right? I mean, I mean, oh, okay. Up. That was that. It yeah. was, tw was here. That was on this golf he, course. Okay. That was here where he had a one shot lead on 18 and made double bogey to lose it. Yeah. He got, that he got screwed. He put, it, he, put it, he put it in a fairway bunker and got, I think he was like under <laughs> the lid or something, kind of got screwed. But so, yeah. you know, he obviously has. Um, at least once played well here. So he yeah. used someone I looked at, but um, the number was a bit too low for me. Yeah, that's the thing because uh, the the fact that you're talking about that see, that's the problem is is some of these guys they're just not playing well enough and even though the numbers okay the like the guys that we took are playing much better they just are they're right. getting the same yep. odds uh, yep. and again that's why it's tough to handicap these things because it'll be the guy that's not playing well that'll go ahead and win you can't predict okay. that so hopefully not uh, hopefully yeah not, right. But there you go. There's the Gala, 30 to 1. Justin Thomas, who has no right being 35 to 1 with the rest of these guys, the way, the way he's playing. I mean, mm -hmm. Jordan Spieth. Should... He's, hurt. he's just hurt. He's just hurt. It's he... just the wrist. 
But speaking of that, yeah, John Rahm just did not even uh, get to play. We were talking about that last week. We weren't sure, I think, at the time of our conversation if he was going to play last week. Right. Yeah, he, yeah he, he withdrew Tuesday night, I think, right? Yeah, yeah it must have been. And then even, even Wyndham at 50-1, to 1, it's like, yeah, you might Wait. as well still be 70-1 to 1 because, you know, you haven't done anything. Yeah, he's another one. He said in his uh, press conference before last week that he'd be happy just to make the cut. But you did, so you know, maybe he's trending in the right direction, <laughs> but definitely doesn't seem like he's ready to win again. Horschel's playing Dale better. Doris struggling. Horschel's playing well, yeah. 71's not bad on him. Yeah, Horschel's playing. The only thing is he already has a win this year, even though it was in a opposite yeah. field. Yep. Still, it's kind of hard for me to envision Billy Horschel winning twice yep. in one year. But, um, yeah, and then there's some of our players that we've talked about this year. Austin Eck wrote, you know, uh, you can see him, you know, you're getting a uh, good number there at 130 to one, keeping mm-hmm. in mind that this is a, uh, a signature event. I, 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 does this guy, is he getting like a waiver or something? Because he, he, he had that yeah. great run a couple of years ago when he finished fourth. Yeah. I'm, I don't know how that works exactly. It yeah. must be a sponsor's invite or something. Yeah. He must've like somehow he found a way to get in that Cause he's still an amateur, I believe. Oh, well, oh! I don't know if you, I don't know if you know his fourth came here. Did you know? Yes, that? that's what I was saying. That's okay. why I'm yeah, guessing okay. that maybe because of that, right. they're bringing him back or something like that. So, yeah. Well, he also played here last year and missed a cut. So, um, yeah, okay. three, three years in a row he'll have played here. Eric Cole's been awful. 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 All right. So there you go. 